everyone, and welcome to the Best Day Ever Crafting Podcast. This is a podcast about my making journey, but also celebrating with you all the reasons why crafting every day makes for the best day ever. My name is Trish, and I can be found on Instagram and Ravelry as Tie-Dye Diva. Show notes can be found in the Ravelry group, and I will leave a link to the show notes in the description box below. So welcome everyone, and if this is your first time here, an extra special welcome to you. As I stated earlier, this is just my space for sharing all the things I've been working on in my crafting world. So I hope you'll stick around and maybe have a your favorite beverage and um, your making as I discuss with you all the things I've been working on since we last chatted. So before I share those things with you, I do want to do a little bit of administrative. Um, as you uh, know, if you've um, been here before, we have a couple of make-alongs going on for 2021. The first one being the Kelborn Woolens Year of the Hand. So Kelborn Woolens has produced 12 hand patterns and they're named by the month. So that's the January hat, the February hat. Um, and right now we're going into the March head. So we did have a winner, however, for the February head. Her name was Wendy. So congratulations, Wendy. She's already been notified. And so she knows that she's won. Instead of just telling you about the hat, here is a picture of the beautiful hat. It's so lovely. We also are working on our jumpers for the first quarter. So um, you guys have been pulling out some beautiful projects. I've really been enjoying going in the thread, looking at all the things you're making. So continue with that. And at the end of the quarter, we're going to have prizes for, for those who participated in the first quarter, which is jumpers. So jumpers are anything that goes on the top of the body. Blouses, sweaters, cardigans, and even large shawls, they will qualify um, for the first quarter make-along. So head over there, um, post your progress photos, your finished object photos, and we will be choosing at least, at least two, possibly three um, individuals to win prizes for quarter one. And I think that's it for admin. So let me get a sip of coffee before I get started with some of the things I've been working on. Um, so the first thing I'll start out with are my finished objects. And I can't believe it myself, but I actually have three finished objects to share with you, right? So the first one is, actually I have two, two hats. So the first hat is just this basic, um, it's a basic beanie. Nothing special about it. So this was supposed to be my January hat. And I kind of chickened out on the January hat because there were some cables that I could not wrap my brain around. I don't know what it was. I just, I tried, I think I, I ripped and frogged about at least three times. It may have been four or five. <laughs> And so in the interest of time and to save myself some frustration, I said, you know what? I'm just going to make a beanie because I had already, you know, cast on the, the um, required number of stitches to knit the January hat. And I didn't want to frog the whole thing because, you know, ribbing is a huge investment in time. So I just said, you know what? I'm just going to keep knitting and make a beanie. And I think it requires 90 stitches. So I just did... Um, I think nine or 10 uh, decrease sections until I got to about one stitch in between each decrease and I just pulled the yarn through and I have a beanie. So I'm going to probably put a pom-pom on this because I do have quite a bit of yarn left over. So this is the Calborn Woolens. I believe Scout is the name of the base. So it's their worsted weight base it's a beautiful yarn it's very basic and and woolly but um it, it is a it is a non superwash wool but it's really nice and springy and just nice and crisp really really enjoyed working with it so 
I'm counting this as my January hit. So yeah, and it smells good. It smells really good. Okay, so, um, and I did wet block this. So it's, see how the stitches are nice and smooth. Really worked out well. If I get, if I do the pom-pom, um, like the, um, the pattern calls for, I may show this again to you the next time I record so you can see what the pom-pom looks like on it. I also completed my February hat. So this is the February hat. A lot more approachable of a pattern for me. <laughs> so as you can see, it's got some um, some one by one ribbing and just lots of texture, lots and lots and lots of texture going on in this head. But nothing complicated, really simple. And I really enjoyed knitting it. So this was knit with Plucky Knitter. Um, I'm hesitating because, you know what? I've got my ball here, so let me grab it. I was hesitating because I couldn't remember the name of the base, but it just popped back up in my head. So this is how much I have left over. And this is Plucky Knitter Hazel. So Hazel is an 80% Merino, 20% Cashmere base. And I don't know whether you can see the texture in that. It's just an absolutely lovely yarn. It almost feels cottony in a way, um, but it's super soft, really, really soft. And I just love the way it turned out. You may be able to see the halo on it from the cashmere. So I'm going to really enjoy making this, I mean, wearing this. And I have a fur pom-pom um, set aside. For this, I believe that's in my bedroom still because I was doing some work on this in my bedroom and I was trying to decide which pom-pom I wanted to put on it. So very, very happy about that. So I'm going to try so hard to stay on, stay on target for the make-along for the hats because that means I'm going to have 12 hats at the end of the year and they'll be nice for myself or either to give away as gifts. So I think that's all I have to say about the hats. Yeah, I think so. So my next finished object is my hitchhiker shawl. So I showed this the last time I recorded. So the hitchhiker shawl is a shawl by Martina Bim. And um, I, let me just show it show you what it looks like so you start out on one edge and it's a series of uh increases and um rapid decreases that make these little teeth like um design in the shawl and as you knit it it just gets wider and wider so that's about as deep as it goes. So it's a really, um, it's really long and shallow. And this is how I plan on wearing it. About like this. So the Hitchhiker Shawl calls for a fingering weight yarn, but I had this skein of yarn that I picked up um, from a big box store. I can't remember, it could have been Joann's. Um, and the name of the yarn is, it's called Melange, because I'm, I'm looking at it right here because I purchased another skein because I loved it so much. So it's from Red Heart. And again, the base is called Melange and it's a 100% acrylic base. I was just in the store. I'm not one who usually goes for acrylic. I much prefer working with um, wool and other natural fibers, but I was, I just, I like to just go and look because I love yarn and <laughs> I just like to see what's new because I kind of feel like um, some of the big box stores and their brands have kind of stepping it up in colors and in textures. So um, this skein caught my eye and I, I just, I fell in love with it. I said, you know what, it was on sale um, and I think it may have been about five bucks per um, ball. So I said, you know what? Let me give it a try. 
and I decided to make the Hitchhiker. So the Hitchhiker does call for a fingering weight yarn. I believe it's Woolmize fingering that the pattern was designed in, but I just wanted to see how it would work up in a worsted weight, and I absolutely love it. I used just about all of the yarn that was in the skein. Um, it's a 150 gram skein. As a matter of fact, let me just show this one to you. So here's the other one that I picked up from Joann's. As you can see, it's called Roll With It Melange. It's 150 grams again, and it's 356, I'm sorry, 389, 389 yards. And I just think it worked up so beautifully. It didn't feel like acrylic um, normally feels um, when I was working with it. It was just so delightful to work with. And thank you all for your suggestions on how to block it. I still have not blocked it, but I would definitely be um, taking your suggestions to use steam um, to block this. So I love it. It's just, I'm going to keep it on for as long as I can because it's, it's just really, really cozy. And the colors are just amazing. You got some hot pinks and some purples and some greens. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. And I'll just share this one with you again. This is the other one that I picked up. And I think I have another one in the room. <laughs> this color is called Green Room. Green Room. So it's got some blues and, and greens and pinks. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this one. There is a shawl pattern on the inside, I believe. Or I might just do another hitchhiker. It would make a beautiful gift for someone. Okay, so that's it in my, um, my knitting finished objects. So I guess we can now go into whips. So I just have two whips. One you've seen before. Um, so I am finishing my Now and Next socks, which is a Marceline Smith pattern, also known as Hey Brownberry on Instagram and Ravelry, I believe. And she also has a podcast called Hey Brownberry which is absolutely delightful. If you haven't checked out her channel, um, I think you would really, really enjoy it. So this is um, a pattern by, again, Marceline Smith, and the pattern is called Now and Next. And you can see the texture on the side of the sock, and the other side is just plain stockinette. And I decided to knit mine in as shorty socks because I have so many longer socks that these really come in handy when you're home. I mean, I'm home so much now and my feet tend to get really, really cold. I think it's because my craft room where I am now doesn't have carpet. It had carpet, but we took took the carpet up because we had to have some major plumbing work done about, oh, probably about five years ago. And um, literally there was a huge hole in this floor. So we decided not to put the carpet um back down, but I kind of regret that sometimes. But anywho, <laughs> this is sock number one. And I'm working on sock number two, which is here. So not, not a lot to see as of yet, but making good progress on that. Um, the yarn, it's beautiful, right? So this is um, D Fleece Fiberworks, um, who unfortunately is no longer dyeing yarn. Um, well, unfortunately for us, she's definitely moving on to some um, more priority things. But um, I love, love, love this, this base. And I believe, the, I can't remember the name of the color, but I guess it really doesn't matter since she's no longer dyeing. But um it references butterflies, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. And I don't have the ball band in this bag. And as you can see, I've also done the cuff with um, a contrast um, color, which actually came with this skein. So um, it was a sock set, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> 
And as you can see, I'm knitting them from the top down. I believe that's what the pattern calls for. Um, yes, it does call for knitting the the um knitting the sock top down. Um, however, I believe it also calls for you to do a heel flap and gusset, but I just substituted that for my usual afterthought heel because I really, really enjoy doing afterthought heels. Um, I, I definitely want to stretch my horizons a bit and experiment with other heels. Um, the Eye of Partridge heel, which I think is so pretty, is something that's been on my radar to want to, uh, to do a sock in. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully I'll get to try that technique pretty soon. All right, so my next finished object is, I'm sorry, my next whip is the March hat. The March hat from Kelborn Woolens. And uh, let me just show you the progress I've made on it. As a matter of fact, I'll probably insert a picture of the hat so you can see what the March hat looks like. Okay, and so here's my progress on my March hat. The pattern calls for you to do three inches of ribbing, one by one ribbing, um, and starting that with a provisional cast on that you will later undo, which gives you um, almost like a, um, like a road brim look. It almost makes it look as if the stitches are just appearing out of nowhere instead of having that, that bumpy, cast on look which doesn't bother me but um, i'm really looking forward to unzipping this to see what this cast on looks like i feel like you can see it better on the opposite side you see how smooth that looks like those stitches are just coming from out of nowhere so i'm really looking forward to seeing what this looks like when it's all done it's a very um basic textured pattern and i'm using Dapper Dye Works. Dapper Dye Works Stapleton is the base, and um, the color is Sweet Potato Pie, and I think he nailed it. <laughs> Sweet Potato Pie is something that's very near and dear to my heart because my mother made the best sweet potato pies. Um, so... When I saw this colorway, I knew that I had to, to get it. And I'm not, not sorry that I did. I think this would be absolutely gorgeous in a sweater. So I may have to put that on my wish list. So again, this is the March hat. And I'm just sitting here knitting a couple of stitches. And I'm hoping that you guys are knitting or crafting too. Okay, so put that away. I'm using my Haya Haya. I don't think these are the sharps. I think these are just the regular Haya Haya needles. They're one of my favorites because they're nice and lightweight. So, and I will share with you the bag that I have this in. This cute project bag, which is way too big for a hat, I know. <laughs> But I've been kind of using this as I go out and about also. And I always have a knitting project with me when I go out. So I just stick my knitting project in there. Um, you've got some pockets. I think I've got some cash in my pockets. And I can just drop my wallet in. It's enough room to put um, one of my small planners or a notepad if I need to. So that's... It's a beautiful, beautiful bag. So again, it is by Rosie Posey Designs. I think I picked this up at one of the recent Vogue um, virtual marketplaces. So Rosie Posey Designs. And again, I will link to all of these shops and yarn dyers and whatnot in the show notes. Okay, so we're moving right along with that. Um, no sewing this week. Um, I really, my sewing mojo is back. I did kind of lose it a little, 
Um, cause I've just been so busy with, you know, occupied with, with other things. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So I still have not finished my dress number one. That's almost completed. And I have a shirt number one, um, that's cut out, which is ac actually what I'm wearing today. And I didn't tell you about that. So this is a 100 X of sewing, um, shirt number one that I'm wearing. It's just a very basic, um, just a very basic top, short sleeves. Of course, you can make them longer if you want. Um, let me move my chair back. See if I can do this gracefully. <laughs> and then so you can get a better view of what the shirt number one looks like. So it stops about well, at least on me, like the middle of my tummy, I should say. Um, and it's there are no seams on the sleeves. It's just very basic. And I just, I love making these. They're just so comfortable and so simple. So, so simple and easy to do. So that's my shirt number one that I'm wearing. I do, and I have another that is cut out and ready to go. It's right back there. So I just need to buckle down and get those finished. And what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to take a um, suggestion from Brittany J. Jones, um, who also has a YouTube channel, as well as uh, Mimi G, who recently have partnered together um, and they have a fabric store online called Melanated Fabrics. So definitely check them out. Um, so they have been suggesting just breaking your sewing down into small increments of time. So instead of saying, oh, I'm going to sew today, saying I'm going to sew for 15 minutes today. I'm going to sew for 30 minutes today and just schedule it in and literally set the timer and stay focused for whatever period of time you said you're going to sew. And I think that's going to work out really, really well with me. So stay tuned. I will keep you posted on that. But I do have a little bit of stitching that I can share with you because I took a Sashiko stitching class. Um, I think the last time we recorded, I said it was, I pronounced it Sashiko. That's the way I'd been pronouncing it for the longest. But um, Carolyn Bloom, who taught the class, she, the way she pronounces it is Sashiko. So that's what I'm going to go with. Um, so I took the class, um, Not House Yarns, which is a beautiful yarn shop in, um, Frederick, Maryland, which is about an hour and 15 minutes from where I live. Um, hosted the class online through Zoom, and it was an absolutely amazing class. If you don't already know Carolyn Bloom, um, please follow her on Instagram if you don't already. I believe her Instagram handle is, um, is it Bloom Handmade? Um, I'll put it right down here on the bottom so you can, um, be able to reference it. So Carolyn, um, as of recently, has been practicing the Sashiko stitches on her knitting and crochet. And so this class that she taught was how to do a persimmon flower on stockinette, on a stockinette background. And because I was a bad student and didn't know I was supposed to do a, um, a swatch, a stockinette swatch, I had to quickly go into my finished objects and like, what, what, what do I have? I can stitch this. I can practice my stitch on. So I picked up my my hat Dana, which is by um, Denise, who is Baron Handmade. So it's the first thing that was sitting on top of my handmade pile. So I picked it up and I did my stitching on my hat Dana, which I think actually turned out pretty good. And even when I put it on, it looks, it, it's not too bad. If I can, you know what, I'll, I'll put it on. Not now because I need a haircut terribly. And I think if I put this hat on and try to take it off, it's not going to be good. So I'll, I'll try it on off camera and insert a picture right here so you can see what it looks like.
but there's my persimmon flower um all hand embroidered on and i absolutely love it it was such a fun class i learned so much um i still have the pattern and um the pattern also came with um another pattern for making a headband with the same flower motif so i feel like i want to um make that because i want to make sure i have this technique um really sounded deep into my mind so that I can um, continue building on it. But I just love it so much. I think it's so, so beautiful. So no sewing, sewing, but definitely some stitching has taken place since we last chatted together. Okay, so looking at my notes, what else? I'm still working on my coastal crop raglan. Uh, for my jumper. So I'm really working hard hoping to get that finished by the end of the month. Um, so I guess now we can move into acquisitions. I had picked up quite a few things since the last time we chatted. Um, why don't I first of all share with you something that was gifted to me. So Ellie of the Craft House Magic Podcast was kind enough to send me four beautiful skeins of yarn in the mail. Look at these. Aren't they absolutely beautiful? So this one here is um, her DK base and the color is Strawberry Fields Forever. Look at that. Purples and pinks, a little bit of yeah, there's some navy in there also. Oh, so pretty. I'm going to take a look at the upcoming Kelborn Woolens hat patterns and maybe I can add some mohair to this to make it a worsted weight or maybe hold a fingering weight with it and maybe do one of the year of the hats with this beautiful color. This one here is also on the same base and this is called Only You. If I'm not mistaken, I think all of her um, colorways are named after songs. This one is called Grello Submarine. It's gray and yellow. It's a beautiful combination. And this one might be my favorite. This is um, now this one is a fingering base. It's a superwash merino um, cashmere nylon blend. And the color is Here Comes the Rain Again. So grays, darker grays, lighter grays. So thank you so much, Ellie. I really, really appreciate them and I can't wait to use them up. And again, the name of um, Ellie's podcast is Craft House Magic. And it is the most, it's just such an enjoyable, lighthearted podcast. And she is just amazingly talented. She's a yarn dyer. She makes bags. Um, so she has an online shop, um, and I believe she sells higher, higher needles in her shop. So definitely check out her podcast and check out her shop. You won't be disappointed. Okay, so I share with you the Red Hot um, Red Heart Roll With It Milan skein. And there's another one in the room. I'll share that one with you next week. Still not sure what I'm going to do with those yet. Um, this is my... Um, Farmer's Daughter Sock Squad um, yarn that came in the mail. So I signed up for her um, her club, her sock club for 2021. And this is the latest installment that came in the mail. Isn't it beautiful? Her combination she puts together are things that I normally probably would not Put together for a sock and contrasting heel and toe but i just i love every single one i've received so again this is from farmer's daughter and i'm not sure if um it's still open for um for new subscribers but i would definitely link to it so you can check it out i also picked up these two beautiful skeins from Queen's Yarn Boutique. 
Rochelle, who's a dear friend of mine and just a sweetheart, um, was having a sale in her shop. And you know how I feel about a sale. And I was able to find two matching skeins. By the time I got to the site and knew about the sale, so much of it was already gone. But I was really happy to be able to get two matching skeins on her Pop Life Merino Fingering Base. It's 490 yards each skein. And this colorway is called Salsa. If you love vibrant, really bright, bright colors, then you're going to love Rochelle's work because that's what she specializes in. Matches my walls. So thank you so much for this, Rochelle. I love them so much. And I'm thinking about what sleeveless sweater I can make with this. I think I can um, make a... I think I have enough because there's 490 yards each to make a sleeveless sweater or tank. So... If anyone has any pattern suggestions, then let me know. But love these, love these. And finally, as far as yarn is concerned, um, I picked up this sock set. Isn't that beautiful? So this is from Shirley Bryan Yarns, and she is out of Canada. Um, and this is her sock set. It's a superwash merino um, nylon blend, 230 yards in the largest skein and 90 yards in the smaller skein. And I love that because I always have so much yarn left over um, after breaking into a regular um, skein of yarn. So this is perfect. This would be perfect for another set of um, shorties or maybe even taller than that. So we'll have to see. And this color is, oh yes, this color is called A Yawn is a Silent Screen for Coffee. So I think that's what that's what hooked me on this because you guys know how I feel about my coffee. Mm-hmm. A yawn is a silent screen for coffee. So cool. Okay, so I also picked up. I know, I've just, but it's been, it's been almost four weeks, so it's not like, well, it's okay. I picked up this beautiful DIY embroidery kit. And it says, nevertheless, she persisted. This kit pretty much has everything I need to make this. Um, it's got the thread. It's got the fabric as well as the hoop. So I'm really, really looking forward to making this. I'm not sure if it includes the, yes, it does include a 22, size 22 tapestry needle. Yep, everything I need. Um, and also there's a stitch sampler included right there. So awesome. And this is from I Heart Stitch. IHeartStitchArt.com. So again, I will link to them. And I picked this up from my local fabric store, which is Stitch Sew Shop in Alexandria, Virginia. All right. Um, while I was there in Stitch Sew Shop, I picked up a sewing pattern. Now, if you've been watching the podcast for a while, you've probably seen this before um, because Arthella had actually uh, made one of these, the Hosta Tea. It's a fancy tiger crafts pattern, and it just looks so cozy and fun and simple. I just love that. I just love not having to do inset sleeves, and this is what I wear. This is this is what I like to wear. So it's simple, it's easy, and I love um, the different body shapes that they have it shown on on the back. It's size inclusive, goes all the way up to a 56 inch bust. And I believe it could easily be modified um, to go even larger if you had to. So really looking forward to making this. And I pulled some fabric for my stash. Um, I think I wanna make it out of this. So this is a beautiful piece of fabric I picked up from Joann's. Um, and this is a jersey knit. 
Now the pattern says that your knit should be at least 30 inch stretch. So I think this will work. Um, I'm gonna give it a give it a shot. I'm gonna take a closer look at the um, at the schematic and the finished size of the garment and choose my sizing really carefully. I probably should do a wearable muslin, but I like to live dangerously. It's another way way of saying I'm just lazy. <laughs> Not really. I just want to get it. I want. It just seems like it, it just takes so much time to do a wearable muslin. But maybe I will. We'll, we'll see because I don't want to ruin this fabric. It's so beautiful. Okay, so yeah, this is the Hosta Tea by Fancy Tiger Crafts. And then finally, I picked up this um, book, which is the Pom Pom Quarterly. And I've been wanting this book because of this beautiful sweater on the back. Um, it's so, so pretty. So, so pretty. Take another closer look at that. So I need to just buckle down and, and, and just, I have a tendency to buy books because I know I want the book. And then I never take some time, but not, you know, as an absolute never, but I want to work on taking more time to just really sit quietly with my um, with my books that I purchase and, and really make good decisions about which items I want to make from the book. Here's a closer picture of that gorgeous sweater. I think Gigi uh, from Gigi Made It is featured in this book, as well as um, Adela Colvin from Lola Bing Yarn is also featured in the book. So um, I was really happy to find this. And I don't know whether you know, but um, I got this from the, my local Joann's store. I had no idea that Joann's carried the Pom Pom Quarterly. So that was a that was a fun, um, exciting acquisition. Okay, so I think I've got all the acquisitions covered. So let's go into a little bit of dream making. Um, I got to thinking not long ago about my stash of yarn, in particular my stash of cashmere yarn. Um, I over the years have developed a quite a sizable stash of really beautiful cashmere yarns, um, most of them from the Plucky Knitter. And I just never used them. And I said, you know what? Um, I've been thinking a lot about self-care and just how, ways that I can incorporate more self-care into my, um, just my overall life routine. Um, and I just thought, you know, how can I incorporate that into my love of making? And I said, you know what? I need to knit up some of this beautiful cashmere. So I'm going to make a three color cashmere cow, which is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. And I'll insert a picture here, although I'm sure you probably already know what that looks like. And these are the colors that I've decided to make my three color cashmere cowl out of. So this one is a one hit wonder, which means that it's not quite the color it was intended to be, but it's absolutely beautiful. It's like this really fun bubblegum pink. This color here is called letterpress, the gray. And this golden color is also a one hit wonder. So I just thought they would be absolutely beautiful together and they are 100% cashmere and it is a sport weight base. I believe the, um, the three color cashmere cowl is a fingering base, but that just means it should be just even extra squishy and extra warm um, and lovely. So I hope to get this cast on very, very soon. 
So that's a dream make. And then I think I've already shared with you. Let me grab my steam yarn fell. I already shared with you my dream make and sewing, which is the hosta. The hosta tea. And I think I'm going to do, it's going to be a cross between these two. Have to figure out which one I'm going to do. So that's, oh, and oh, you know what? There is one more dream make because um, this, so this is going into a little bit of jibber jabber as we finish off dream making. So um, I don't know whether you're aware of it or not, but March is the national crochet month. So I really wanted to do some crochet this week and this month rather. And I just so happened to be watching um, uh, Amy Beth of the Fat Squirrel Speaks podcast. And she talked about this really cute pullover crochet jumper called the Granny Go Round Jumper. I'm going to insert a picture of it right here. Isn't it adorable? It's so, so cute. So I'm trying to think of what color combinations do I, can I put together to make that? Um, and let's see, today's the fifth. And is it possible that I could finish it by the end of March for the jumper make along? I don't know. Um, I got to think about it because I really want to get my coastal crop raglan done. I mean, I don't want to overextend myself. And um, so I have to think about that. So, but I really, I just, I love that cardigan. And I did some research on YouTube as to how to do the um, the raglan in crochet. And I think I got it. I think I figured it out. So um, you'll probably hear more about that on the next episode. So um, yeah, I'm really, really excited about that. If I don't get it done this month, it's I think it's, I think I'm going to do it because I just, I love it. I love it so much. Um, the only other thing I want to share with you is um, some new items that I have in my sticker and stationery shop. Um, so I'll just go through these with you really quickly. So I'm just, I've got butterfingers today, just dropping all the things. Okay, so um, this is a small kit with illustrations and boxes and some functional arrows. And I've just simply called this sticker kit Ethnicity. It's, I think it's just really, 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 really cute and fun. Um, I might actually plan in my social media planner with this kit this week. And again, all of these are individual stickers. And these little itty bitty ones, the easiest way to get them off is with just, just bend it and they just pop right out. Um, I also have tweezers in the shop because when I'm doing my, when I want to place these really tiny stickers, in specific areas, it really helps when you use a tweezer. So again, just bend and they come right off the page. Um, and I say a small kit because most of my sticker kits come with five sheets. Um, but this one, I'm just, I'm really just experimenting with which direction I wanna go in. Do I wanna keep, keep offering um, five pieces per set or do I wanna just scale down to three if, if you have purchased and you have any thoughts on that, then let me know. But again, this is the Ethnicity Mini Kit. I had already created a Coffee Lover's set, and now we have a Tea Lover's sticker set. Again, they're all individual stickers. Just bend your page and they pop. They pop right off. Um, and also I created what I call woven hearts. 
So if anyone is a weaver or even if you're a knitter or crochet, you can really identify with the texture on these. So we've got them in pink and the pinks and purples, the blues and the green and yellows. And finally, oh, actually there's one more, one more sticker sheet that I created. Um, this here is the pink planner girl. So all your planner accessories. I really, really like this. This will make a really nice gift for your, your teen or your tween who's just starting to, um, to plan. And they're, um, again, all individual stickers. And finally, in the wellness section, you're going to find these. I call this sticker sheet Wellness Words. And I don't know whether you can see what some of the wording says. Think about how far you've already come. Healthy. It's all relative. I'm stronger because of it. Laugh often. And this is probably my favorite. My illness does not define me. So again, these are all individual stickers and we just pull them off and place them in your planner um so if you know maybe you know someone who is dealing with chronic illness that would make a wonderful gift i find um for myself you know keeping up with my health issues writing things down and just it just helps you to be more mindful about um, the things that I'm dealing with. So hopefully this will help someone else who finds himself in a similar situation. Okay, and I think that's everything. Yeah, I think that's everything. So thank you so much for being here with me today. I'm going to work really hard on um, being here more often. Um, every two weeks is my goal. If I'm not here every um, other week, then you know it's because either I'm not feeling well or because I've been really, really busy in the shop. And for this, um, these past few weeks, it's been a little bit of both. So um, hopefully things will stable out, stabilize and um I'll be able to be here a lot more often. I had a really good chat with Arthella um, this week, and she helped me out with, um, you know, brainstorming, you know, ways and ideas for time management. So I'm going to be implementing some of those suggestions and um, just looking forward to digging into my um, my wish list of things I want to um, to create and 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 make and um, I'm really excited about um, my crafting goals for the next few weeks and I hope you are too so I hope you continue to stay well and safe you and your family and friends um, I hope wish that you get lots of making done and that you get lots of joy from your making and um, I will see you hopefully in a couple of weeks. Okay. All right. Bye.